Hi, Tim. Do you get to bat first today? All right. Before Ataxia, life was pretty normal. We had a normal childhood. My brothers played sports, and my mom was you know, involved in everything. My parents came to everything, and it was just normal, happy childhood. We uh, all got along pretty good. Our family life before the diagnosis of Ataxia with the boys was, we, did, we played sports, you know, I coached the boys in Little League and soccer, and Tim played hockey. Every summer we'd go to the beach. When I was growing up, I liked to, you know, play sports like baseball, soccer, basketball, ride my bike around the neighborhood with my friends and my brother JT. When I was younger, I used to play like paintball a lot, and I was pretty competitive and go down most weekends. When I was growing up, like, Pretty much like every every other kid, you play all all the traditional sports, baseball, you know, soccer. My dad was like coach of like all of my teams and made sure I had a well-rounded kind of sports. I think our life was uh, very typical, you know, neighborhood friends, childhood memories of you know, uh, sports and Girl Scouts and basketball and all that. We didn't really notice Tim's symptoms at first. It was pointed out to us by a family friend. We weren't sure what was going on. So it was basically balance. Balance was the first thing that kind of tipped us off. And she kind of approached me and said, you know, I think that maybe your son is drinking and you don't know it. Not wanting to be, you know, the parent that, that thought it wasn't, you know, my kid, that's not my kid. And so I had told him our insurance had changed and we were all going for a physical. Uh, your son's not drinking, he's not on drugs. Something is wrong, but I'm not sure what. And sent us on our quest to our first neurologist. Ataxia is a symptom that you see in various neurologic disorders. It comes from dysfunction in a part of the brain called the cerebellum, which controls balance, coordination, speech. There are different types of ataxia. About one-third of the ataxic disorders we see are inherited or genetic, as with the DeMint family. They have a recessively inherited ataxia called ataxia with oculomotor apraxia type 2. The other more common ataxia that comes on in childhood and young adults is Friedreich's ataxia. We would go ahead and have them tested. It was a tough decision, but we thought if they are, it's better to be proactive than reactive. So we figured we could get them you know, started on whatever therapies they have, had available at the time. And the results came in, and they wouldn't give it to us over the phone. When I was first diagnosed, I think I was a sophomore, so maybe like 16. And so we made the, the trip. We went, and we're told they both had it. And I didn't want to tell them right away because, you know, kids are cruel, and I didn't know if it was too much information and they really wouldn't handle it. When we found out it was hereditary, we all got tested. And then that was probably the big turning point for me. It was, um, we found out that all three of my brothers had it and I'm not even a carrier. I don't have the disease, I'm not a carrier. So um, I struggled with that for a really long time. Um, survivor's guilt, they say. Uh, it was hard and I did not cope with it very well.
honestly, like, because, like, my fa- you know, my family all got together to read the diagnoses or whatever. And, like, my sister and my mom were, were kind of crying. And I was, like, when I got mine, I was like, well, this sucks. But I kind of wish everyone wasn't sad right now. And it was really Tim who talked to both of us. And Jerry kind of wanted to tell him right away. And, and Tim, the older one, he said, you know, Mom, they're going to start recognizing little things about themselves. That was hard. It was tough to tell your, you know, give your kids a life sentence, basically. I think kind of shock for me. Like, we didn't really understand it. And then... We had a family meeting and we were, and I think them seeing me cry and be upset probably upset them more. But we knew that this was going to have to be um, a thing that we were going to be open with them through the whole thing. You know, my brothers would never be able to have the type of life that we wished for them, but that, you know, through my kids and, you know, they'd, they'd get the joy and be able to um, enjoy kids, you know, through my kids since they would not be able to have any of their own. But now I'm kind of seeing the positive of me not getting it and them getting it. You know, it still makes me really sad, but I'm able to deal with it now. Some of the challenges that I see are with just getting around, you know, walking up and down the stairs. I mean, they have that stair chair thing now, but they're all pretty proud. They don't like to use it. You can't go out. You can't really ming like ming mingle with like quote normal people uh, your age. Like, can't do stuff. So it can be can be a frustrating, and then it can be a depressing. Some days I get very frustrated. Well, a lot of the times I get frust- very frustrated because you can't do like simple things. And I always feel like I'm inconveniencing everyone who has to help me with do like simple things or whatever. Just getting up in the morning and wanting to get up in the morning. It's pretty much a constant struggle. I've learned for myself to be a lot more accepting and um, understanding and there's like this whole like thing that I never knew about most people I talk to don't really know about one of the only problems we have is travel of me having going coming from my house always to here because I can't drive to my house and stuff but it was just learned to work around it like on the days I have off I'm usually here Tim is um, just an amazing young man. He has a great sense of humor. He absolutely uh, loves the Kings. The DeMint family have had quite an odyssey. First getting the diagnosis for the boys, coping with the fact that they have three young men who are going to require special intervention, special physical therapy, and a special setup at home and in the community in order to stay active and and keep their performance up. And they have met every challenge. At first, it started with just seated type exercises. We have them half kneeling now. So they're, they're like literally on their knees. And we're doing some boxing. So that challenges their core as well, as well as all the other postural muscles. Tim's the, the oldest oldest boy, so he's he got a, quite a, a interesting personality, but it's, it's all fun. Um, he definitely is a little quirky with his comments, but we're, we all just kind of laugh. And I was waking up like really tired. It was kind of hard to get out of bed a lot of mornings. Well, I could notice like a bit of off balance and stumbling, but those are the first like symptoms I majorly noticed. Definitely the loss of coordination. Like when I would go out paintballing, I would like fall over and I'd get do a lot worse. Like, and I was just noticing slowly over time. Jerry and my dad would have been the same age. My dad has since years passed. And um, I just was so thankful for that connection with Jerry. And I was so excited to hang out with the guys. But I I really, really do love Jerry so, so very much. You know, the Demins will say the same thing, and I agree too, is this is like, God does have a plan for us, and God does put people in our lives for a reason. And I know that Jerry Demint 
is put into my life, you know, to be that extra father figure, that extra paternal figure. And I've talked to him about that before. I said, you know, Jerry, you've always, you've always reminded me of my dad and I'm so thankful for that, you know, and he'll just say, Eric, you know, God has a plan for us and God, we're all here for a reason. He's such a godly man. He's such a hard worker. He's just, to me, what many people hope for and dream for and a father and a husband. And um, he's just an, I just feel like he's an all American kind of guy with the real human feel because how could he not have human feel with a family such as this and a situation such as this? Well, honestly, I would say it was probably more frustrating um, for my mom going through the process with all the different doctors. But yeah, it was, it was kind of frustrating because my body was going through all the, the tests, the things to try to figure out what it was. Kids that should mo normally, under normal circumstances, most likely be out in the workforce, you know, and maybe having their own families. Parents with children longer, you know, in, in, the, in the house, and it's been, it's, it's kind of neat to have your kids, but, you know, I wish for, for them they could have the normal life where they, they would have their family going and got their education and, you know, been able to lead a normal life, but that's not the plan God had for us, I think. I think he has, he has bigger plans, so, and I think um, we're just gonna go with that plan because he's a lot smarter than we are, that's for sure. I get a lot of inspiration out of it myself. I mean, to see them just not giving up, just keep on, you know, even if they're stuck in the a, you know, wheelchair to have to go someplace, you know, to still go out and maybe Peter has a buddy that takes them out places every once in a while, you know, and they'll go out, just hang out, and he'll do it, you know, he'll get up and do it. And uh, JT and his girlfriend will go to the park and have picnics and things like that. and. You know, he's, they're doing it, and so that's, to me, that's inspiring. And see that they just haven't given up on life and they're making the best they can out of their situation. People that uh, have God and know, you know, Jesus in their heart, I think have comp that compassion that really uh, comes out and shows. One other thing I, I feel strength-wise is that um, since my daughter did not get the ataxia genes. We know, you know, our hope is that the boys will live a long life and, and they might outlive us. Um, and if they do, we're really comfortable in the fact that she's got a good head on her shoulders and has a strong marriage and is raising her family now and down the road. Those kids look at wheelchairs and walkers like part of our household. They think nothing of it, you know, to help their uncles or go run and get something for them. So I feel really comfortable in the fact that if we, you know, when dad and I aren't here anymore, that um, they're gonna be in good hands. She's gonna be able to manage their care. I know it's made me more, much more aware of disabled people around me to help them rather than, you know, everybody always wants to see someone in a wheelchair. They wanna run and get ahead of them so they don't slow them down. But, you know, open the door for someone with a wheelchair, someone coming with a walker. I think it's, it's heightened my feelings towards people with disabilities just to, to notice it more and and, uh, and 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 understand they're just like they're just like me just you know getting through life and people complain about the smallest things I just it surprises me so much and I want to say if you had five minutes you know to see what my boys are going through getting ready for a cool event that's coming up tomorrow morning in your Belinda and for a great cause a local family actually the Dements and Yorba Linda, battling this kind of rare disease called ataxia. So they've organized the ninth annual OC Walk and Roll to cure ataxia. And for us all to learn a little bit more about it. Tomorrow morning, September 16th at the East Lake Village Community Association Clubhouse parking lot in Yorba Linda. Well, we're here at our third annual walk and roll for ataxia. Ataxia is a neurological disease that affects about 150,000 people in the United States and 200,000 uh, worldwide. Not very many people know what ataxia is, and I have four children, and three of my four children have this rare disease of ataxia. Um, we're having our walk and roll event, we're trying to raise money, we're trying to raise awareness, and we have had an amazing turnout with over 600 people that are here to support us and walk and roll for ataxia. Somebody wanted to get involved and um, they feel 
Maybe somebody in their family might have some symptoms of ataxia and maybe they're in part of the country that um, no one's ever heard of it. You know, really research what it is. Don't give up and just think it's nothing um, because they are doing trials all the time with new drugs. And um, if you don't know what you have, it's hard to get the cure. Donations of money and time are always great. I mean, money buys research and research finds the cures. Yeah, we're going to get involved any way we could to try to make their lives better and, and other people. Probably the biggest thing I've learned is you have to take your time, savor the good moments. You thought I'd quit it, thought it's too hard. I'll show you how I rise above. You thought I'd give up when the rain came.